Fox Sports. We are Fox Sports. We are Welcome to San Francisco and strap yourself in for what should be another great night of pitching. Madison Bumgarner goes for his 10th win for the Giants. Meanwhile, Johnny Cueto with the best earned run average in all of Major League Baseball will try to win his eighth for the Cincinnati Reds. It's Cueto against Bumgarner. Will Johnny be good tonight next? Find out next on Fox Sports Ohio. Hi, hello, and welcome to the Left Coast to San Francisco, everybody, along with the crafty left-hander Chris Welton, Jim Day. I'm George Grand. Reds against the Giants, game two of the series. They started off on the right foot yesterday, and with Cueto going, they hope to do the same today. Oh, you're right about that, George. Anytime you have your ace on the mound, you think you've got a really good chance to win, although Johnny Cueto's only garnered seven wins on his own this year. The ball club plays well behind him. They just don't score him a lot of runs. He is 2-0 and his last three starts, earned run average, Typical Johnny Cueto this year, batting average against minuscule. If he's on his game, it'll be very tough for the Giants to really put any kind of a sustained rally together. The Reds have ridden their starting pitching through most of this first half, and for the San Francisco Giants, Madison Bumgarner has been big time for them all year. Well, he has, and he was against the Reds back on June the 5th when he beat Mike Leake 6-1. to He pitched like an all-star, and this is a matchup of a couple of all-stars, probably. Nine-game winner, hard thrower, fixes mechanics about seven starts ago, and ever since that time, his fastball has been riding about 92, 93 miles an hour. He's got that kind of funky sidearm delivery, but he still keeps his fingers on top of the baseball, and he forces that slider down, and he's a very tough customer. Young kid, very strong kid. He's feeling his way through the major leagues in a big way, and this is a matchup of a couple of really fine pitchers tonight. Hitters, they're not excited about this matchup, but we are. Well, you know, uh, when you look at the Reds against the Giants, it's always a great matchup. When you come west, sometimes it's been a great trip for the Reds. Sometimes they've struggled. Coming up next, we'll tell you why. They've turned things around of late. The Reds out west again, trying to keep the win streak alive.
Fox Sports Ohio is being brought to you by your local Ford dealer. Ford, go further. By Cincinnati USA Regional Tourism Network. Stay close to CincinnatiUSA.com. And by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Great to have you back in San Francisco in the Bay Area. What a picture-perfect day around San Francisco. Temperatures in the 70s. On the other side of the Bay was near 90 degrees, but a picture-perfect night for baseball tonight as the Reds and the Giants are ready to embark on game number two of this four-game set. And, Chris, we've been on this road trip many times. Sometimes in the old days, it was a rough road trip, but the Reds are playing better out here. Well, they're all playing better, George. You know, the good news is that those guys who are on the team right now, they don't remember all those bad games and those bad trips out here. We do, but they don't because it's all fresh for them. Recently, the Reds have been pretty good out here when they come to AT&T Park, and this is no exception to it so far. They won the first game of four last night. Todd Frazier's put himself together a real nice collection of trips to the West Coast, especially here at AT&T Park against San Francisco. You see over a 430 batting average, four home runs, 14 driven in, and they need Todd Frazier to have that kind of production if they expect to salvage two or three of the next three games they've got here. And, you know, he's not the lone ranger when it comes to producing here at AT&T Park. Frazier's been outstanding over 400, but look at Jay Bruce and Brandon Phillips, too. Their number's exceptional here. Well, Jay Bruce, again, last night, kept continuing to get it done, and Brandon Phillips hit the only home run that the Reds had last night. So, these three guys, you know, you're going to depend on. Remember that tonight, Joey Votto is not in the starting lineup, so you're looking at the three guys right here in the middle of the lineup that the Reds are hoping to get some offensive production from. And look at the last few years, from four, the last four years, how the Reds have turned it around from 2006 to 2020. Their ring percentage was under 400, but look at it now, over 500 from 2011 to this year, Chris. That's what good starting pitching will do for you, isn't it? And that's what the Reds have run in here really since 2011. They bolstered their starting pitching staff. You usually win with pitching right here in AT&T Park. It's a big ballpark. It's a not an easy ballpark to hit home runs in or score a lot of runs in. So you're going to win with and lose with pitching, and I think the Reds, that's a big reason for their big turnaround. A couple of notes for tonight. Uh, Chris mentioned it, Joey Votto not in the starting lineup. The other note, Jim Day has it coming up next. We've got another Cuban pitcher to talk about, and it's not a role as Chapman. That story's next with J.D. when we return. Reds. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Cincinnati Reds. 
I'm Jim Day on the field. Obviously, the Reds have had success with a Cuban defector in a role as Chapman. Today, they dipped into that pool again with the signing of Raisel Iglesias. They signed him to a reported seven-year, $27 million contract. He is a right-handed pitcher with a lively fastball, 94 to 96 miles per hour. He defected from Cuba in November. The Reds scouted him not only with the Cuban national team, but they saw him pitch in Mexico. They made two trips to Haiti. Other teams were after this guy, but the Reds outbid everyone else as you look at some further numbers. Now, beyond that fastball, the Reds says he has four quality pitches, and they project him as a starter. Here's general manager Walt Jockety. They very, feel very confident this guy has four quality pitches. He has three right now, and he's, the, and he's developing a, a changeup. He's got a, you know, a fastball that's 94, 96. He's got a, a good curveball and a power slider. And uh, has just started throwing a changeup, and he has the makings of a very good changeup. So uh, that, and we feel that once we get him into the U.S. and get him uh, on a regular routine with developing strength and, and getting a few more pounds on him and so forth, that he'll be... Uh, uh, should be a very good starter. Shabby and I, we were talking about like, hey man, we, we continue to, to you know to to push, you know what I mean, to, the the Q1 players, and uh, you know we, we we are very excited, you know, and I heard the great things about him, you know, I saw some. Uh, you know, some stuff from, um, you know, on, on the Internet and, and um, you know, some feedback that some highlights and stuff from him. And, uh, you know, uh, he, he looked pretty good, you know, so hopefully he can be here soon and uh, help us to win because that's, uh, that's our main goal. Now, he's not in the United States yet. He's working out visa issues. General Manager Walt Jockety tells me that he will go to the Dominican complex for the Reds, pitch in some games there. Then they will determine where in the minor leagues he will go, most likely double-A or triple-A. But don't look for him to be there very long because they signed him to a major league contract. They are big-time excited about the signing today. And they're big-time excited about game two of four. A little Friday night baseball in Frisco. George and Chris are next with the lineups and first pitch on Fox Sports Ohio. statue one of the greatest giants ever number 24 honored with that edifice outside this outstanding ballpark by the bay in San Francisco let's check your starting lineup for Brian Price and the Cincinnati Reds in game two of this series sponsored by Meyer Billy Hamilton back in the leadoff spot Todd Frazier bat second 
Brandon Phillips, after missing three games, came back, hit a homer yesterday. He hits in the three spot. Jay Bruce hits cleanup. Joey Votto gets the day off today. Devin Mezzarocco will catch Johnny Cueto. Usually it's Brian Pena, but Pena is in for Votto at first. Heisey's in left. Cozart the shortstop. And Johnny Cueto, the pitcher, bats in the number nine position. Here's Madison Bumgarner, Chris. Well, nine and four overall for this big, hard-throwing left-hander. I mean big guy, too. About six feet, five inches, 235 pounds, 16 starts. One of those complete games. He's got good control, lots of strikeouts, keeps the ball in the ballpark. And Billy Hamilton takes a delivery and bangs it into left for a base hit. And the Reds get a leadoff batter on. Now you bring the infield in and you open up an opportunity that a ground ball that would normally be caught finds a hole right there. You may cut the angle off, but the third baseman didn't have much of reaction time right there as you see that ball right by Sandoval and finally the Reds do what they want to do which is get Billy Hamilton on to get this game going last night Hamilton was one for three a single to center he was thrown out trying to score from third on a pop up to second 32 stolen bases he had one stolen base last night he leads all National League rookies in stolen bases and behind only D Gordon in the National League overall and Chris, you and I were around the batting cage with Bruce Bochy the last couple of days, and he said, we just want to keep him off the bases because he changes the game once he gets on. Yeah. It makes everybody nervous, not just the catcher, but the infielders, the pitcher. You know, you wonder now, do I have to throw more fastballs because I want to give Posey a chance to throw Hamilton out? Well, you got Frazier's a good fastball hitter, so it's kind of a beginning of a big, big snowball that begins to roll if you can get Hamilton on base. A little bit bigger lead for Hamilton here. Bumgarner, big, long, lanky motion. And he's worked a lot, Chris, on trying to hold runners better. It's a little funky motion right there. You know, he can't hang his leg too long without that being a balk. And I'm sure that they're taking a long look at him. He has only allowed four stolen bases on the year. Dan Bellino is the first base umpire behind Hamilton. That pitch is up high. That's Chef Kellogg, your home plate umpire and the crew chief here. E.J. Rayburn's at second, and Pat Holberg, who was behind the plate yesterday, is your umpire down at third. Note the uh, uh, memo out to Todd Frazier. you got to be ready. I think he kind of quick pitched him right there with a little slide step. I'm not sure Frazier was ready for that one. Ball and a strike. Runner not going. Change up. Fouled off at the plate. One and two. Frazier, two hits yesterday. Two for four. The average up to 283. 17 homers. 45 knocked in on the season. Boy, he has been a key to the Reds offensive late and we showed you the numbers how successful he's been the last eight games 433 here at AT&T Park the kid with the happy feet gets a little bigger lead down at first yeah so what's happened so far is that every time Bumgarner has thrown to first he gives you a high leg kick every time he's gone to the plate it's been a slide step Two balls, two strikes. He's going, and they got him picked. The throw down to second will be in time, and he's nailed at second base. Bumgardner high fives his first baseman, Duval, as they pick the right pitch to toss over, and their base runner a race for the Reds. Well, it was the first time that he threw over there with a very abbreviated leg kick, so he was one step ahead, thinking that is, of Billy Hamilton. And a good job by Crawford on a throw from Duval that was a little high to get the tag down. So the base runner race one away, and here's Frazier now 2 2. Dribble down the third baseline. Bumgarner from his knees will not get it there in time, and Frazier will have an infield hit. So two hits for the Reds, but only one on here. Here's another look. Well, a swinging bunt. And a perfect spot is just about as effective as a base hit into the outfield. Although Bumgarner makes a nice play on that. He's probably fortunate that ball did not go down the right field line. There's plenty of room to rattle around down there, too. Here's Brandon, two for four last night, including his seventh homer of the year. His sixth homer of the year, rather. Missed three games with the heel injury and noticeably was not 100% last night running, but he's... Swung the bat twice very effectively. This some bloop to the right side and out of play for strike one. He did look good jogging. Yeah. 
around the bases after that home run. And that's about the best way you can describe it. <laughs> he did not look 100% when he was thrown out at the plate. 277 overall with those six homers. Nine years of major league service. North Carolina native. His mom and his dad are in town for the series. They decided to make the trip to San Francisco. And his young son is now one years old. Getting big, huh? No balls, two strikes. He got him. Two away. Chris, you mentioned Bumgarner, kind of a funky motion. It reminds you a little bit of. Stan Belindi has got that little <laughs> bit of a hiccup in his motion. He kind of sticks it way out there. He does. But you know the key to being able to keep it out there and he's got a big long arm action. But you still have to keep your fingers on top of the baseball it takes a very strong arm to do that. He's been good about changing speed. You see what he's done over the last few starts six of them with a one point six earned run average has only walked eight in the last six games. Here's Jay the average. At 230 with seven homers, 39 knocked in, three for four yesterday. Uh, another extra base hit. He's had at least one extra base hit in seven straight games. Short lead for Frazier down at first. Beaumont, Texas native. Time on the disabled list and speaking of running last night and even talking to him and his teammates after the game last night they noticed it too. He was running more freely last night than he has since he came off the disabled list after his knee surgery. Frazier turning around to the first base umpire Bellino saying did that did that knee come around. It, he comes close to balking. And that's well, the key to a good motion. You know the story of that. You're right. Hop left side, but it'll be in the seats. Well, will... He's got to throw over with Frazier there. Frazier second on the team with 10 stolen bases. And most of Frazier's stolen bases are the sneak attack type, where he doesn't give you a very big lead. He just takes off as soon as the pitcher lifts his leg up. But Bumgarner has shown. Everybody what you talked about George is that he's really varies his moves with a runner at first base He's just not an easy guy to pick up a, a sequence on uh, They do it again, and they're gonna get their second out of the inning bum Gardner Cashes in on two moves and the Reds two base runners after two hits in the first are both erased To the bottom of one we go Cueto to the mound was for this. in San Francisco now here in before that in San Diego over 1500 major league victories one of the best in the business Bruce Bochy here's his Meyer starting lineup Gregor Blanco is in the leadoff spot you know Pagan's on the disabled list he 
has a back difficulty and just went on the DL this week. Hunter Pence bat second. Buster Posey back behind the plate. In June, he's been outstanding. His swing is dialed in. Switch hitting Pablo Sandoval hits behind him. Michael Morse, big power in left. He'll hit behind Sandoval. Duval, another start at right. He homered last night. Crawford, Hicks, and Bumgardner. That's one through nine. Your Meyer starting lineup. And here's Johnny. Well, Johnny's been good against the Giants, but he has not faced them in a couple of years. In fact, you've got to go back to June of 2012 when he last pitched against them. Gave a, that is in the regular season. Schinberger. Off his shin, but right to Pena, and they'll tap the bat. And Johnny's caving in on that leg. It looked like it hit right below the knee. Now, it only hurt for a while. I mean, if it didn't get him on either the ankle or the knee, we just got him on the side of the leg right there. It's going to bark a while. There's no question about it, but it shouldn't bother him really at all. What they're saying in the dugout. Charge that ball. Put a glove on that shit. <laughs> he waved to the dugout. I'm okay. Don't come out. But still, they'll keep an eye on it. Now you, the key to his success so much, Chris, in recent years has been conditioning in those legs. That and command of his fastball and every other pitch. He's just as a guy that you can't guess along with. He throws really effectively six different pitches now. And the fewest of all are really his fastball. He doesn't really throw all that many four seam fastballs except when he has to. But he moves the ball around, has great movement in and out. Cozart gobbles that up. They'll get Pence at first. There's two away. Well, check your four defensive alignment for Cincinnati, the number one defensive team in all of baseball. I mean, the errors tell you one story. They've allowed only 31 miscues this year. And tonight, Heisey in left, Hamilton in center, Bruce in right. Frazier, Cozart, Phillips, and Pena across the infield. Pena, Favado, and Mezzarocco behind the plate. Last night, Chris, we were treated not to defensive numbers, but the defensive plays that really were key in a victory. Three plays that... Don't show up in the scorebook, but we're key to that win. Oh, you're right. And one of those was a really nice play on a bunt by the pitcher Mike Leake. There's Posey at 295, nine homers, 39 knocked in. And you saw the defensive alignment, and the Reds manager, Brian Price, agonized. You, you know that he wanted to give Joey Votto a night off with a left hander, tough left hander going. He decided this would be the night. But what he's done is. He's got Mezzarocco catching Cueto, and all year it's been Pena catching Cueto, and what do you do? You know, you give Votto a night off against a tough left-hander. You still want to keep Mezzarocco's hot bat in the lineup, so they put Pena first. But you disrupt what has been a great combination, Cueto yeah, and Pena. Yeah, but if you're thinking forward, and you're thinking, say, all the way into the playoffs, mm -hmm. are you going to sit Devin Mezzarocco in a playoff game. No way. Well, you've got to be able to get him in there some way, and catcher is probably the only place he's going to play. So at some point, a pitcher, even if he loves to pitch to one particular catcher, you've got to be able to get, let him be versatile enough to move in with somebody else. Pena's done a terrific job, no question about it. And I think if Cueto had his choice, he'd probably rather have Brian Pena back there. But at the same time, Mezzarocco works with everybody else and works very well with everybody else. So why not Cueto? We've talked a lot about the improvement at the plate and the growth and maturity of Devin Mezzarocco. Even more impressive is how he's taking charge behind the plate, calling games. Posey fouls this one off, two balls, two strikes. And I think with that in mind, I think that Devin Mezzarocco is really going to give an extra effort tonight to try to stay on the same page. Get with Cueto, think along with him, try to anticipate what Johnny wants to throw on a particular pitch rather than having maybe set him up the way the catcher wants to set him up. 2 2, wide a third, Frazier has it. And it's a 1 2 3 for Johnny Cueto. So, heading to the second in San Francisco, Jay Bruce back to the plate.
have 22 more errors than Cincinnati has. They are ninth in the league defensively. Morrison left, Blanco in center, Pence in right. Pence, one of the league leaders in assists. He usually is. He's got six this year. Sandoval, Crawford, Hicks, Duval, and Posey behind the plate catching Bumgarner. That's your four defensive alignment. Major League debut last night for Adam Duval at first base, and he, in his third at bat, came up with his first hit and his first major league home run. And Chris, even as as impressive as the, the home run he hit, his final at bat, a line drive down the third that ended the game, he got around on a Aroldis Chapman fastball. Oh, you're right, and had Todd Frazier not be guarding the line right there to take a double away, that ball game would would have continued on based on that line drive. He centered it up. He's got a quick bat, but you know you're trying to get a read on a young player where his weaknesses are you know right now he can hit a fastball and it's funny you, you talk about all the, the statistical analysis of today and the Reds have bought into that so much more and talking to Freddie Benavides after the game who does a lot of that with the Reds infielders with on the basis of the at bats that they saw from him it was Freddie Benavides that pulled Frazier two steps towards the line in that situation a step and a half more than that what they wanted it turned out to be the right place at the right time so defensive metrics are great but the eye is better huh Bruce to left center high in the air under it is Blanco big outfield here isn't it Chris a lot of room to roam for a center fielder and a lot of room to find for a hitter. Yeah, what it does for a pitcher it gives you confidence so that when you get behind on a hitter even a guy powerful like Jay Bruce who knocked one off the center field wall last night it still gives you confidence that you can throw a high outside fastball and have him hit it as far as he wants in the left center field. Chances are you're going to get the same baseball back. There's Mezzarocco 0 for 4 last night. Breaking ball drops in there. In the seventh, Milwaukee leading Colorado two to one. The Brewers won last night, so did the Reds. Cincinnati remains seven and a half games back of Milwaukee. The Dodgers and the Cardinals are scoreless in the first. St. Louis will leave LA to come here when the Reds leave town on Tuesday. The Cardinals will begin a three game series here. Dodgers won last night, so the Dodgers are only two games back of the Giants right now. Two away as Mezzarocco bounces out. You know, we come to San Francisco and so much to see. And you got the beautiful view of the bay. And all you have to do is take a deep breath, Chris, and what do you smell? Garlic fries. JD, what do you got down there? I got some garlic <laughs> fly fries. <laughs> Came to speak. <laughs> you challenged me last night. I wanted to come through right away. And again, I'm. So how are they? Give us a report on those. You know, they're very, very good. Although, if I have to do a post-game interview, <laughs> you do it by yourself. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do it from a distance. Now, we. But they're we, very good. We all have gotten garlic fries. I've never seen anybody finish them. It, it, it's they're lethal, aren't they? There's big chunks of garlic on them. They are very tasty, but you're right. It's kind of like a really rich chocolate. They're really good at first, and then you get halfway through, and you're like, I don't think I can finish this. We'll, we'll see. We'll try to attack it. We think you can. We have confidence in you, and you probably add an ice cream when it's over, too, right? Oh, no. One, two, three, go the Reds in the second. J.D., you got some time in between innings to munch away.
out. Serious lawyers for serious injuries. Call 1-800-ELK-OHIO. Reds are now over 500 at home and over 500 on the road at 21 and 20. The Brewers have built up their lead in the Central with a 49 and 32 overall record and at home five games over 500. These are two of the three teams Chris that are over 500. Bobble by Phillips and they'll have no play. That'll go as a base hit by Sandoval to lead off the second inning. Well, they're going after Johnny Cueto early on. They're going to be aggressive, and he puts the ball on the ground. Brandon went such a long way forward, and at that point, you're hoping the ball takes a good hop into your glove and not a bad hop off the edge. That's a tough error. Whoa. Give Phillips an error on that. <laughs> Brandon will tell you he probably should have had it anyway, but that's a long I mean, way to go. E even if he fields it, I mean, <laughs> yeah. You still got to stop and come back and make a, a very strong throw going away from first base to the back. I mean, he's he's capable of it, but that's a tough error. So a runner on for the Giants to lead off the second, and here's Michael Moore. He's got some home run power. Moore's did not start last night. He did come into. Pinch hit late in the game. In his Washington National days, Chris, he hit some long home runs against the Reds. Big time power, big sweeping swing. Over the bag, Phillips will tap the bag and turn it into two. So that runner erased. 4 3 double play, two away. Uh, Johnny Cueto get his share of ground ball double plays. He would get more, but he doesn't really have that many base runners. He gets a lot of ground balls. He's around 53% ground balls, and that time gives Brandon a chance to redeem himself. You saw on the replay that play a little more difficult than it might have looked at first glance. You saw Brandon's foot come over the bag. He slipped, but still had the presence to deliver to first. Here's Adam Duval first major league hit a homer last night and boy did he tag it. The Giants called up Joe Panic and Duval from Fresno two of the league leaders in average and home runs. And both are playing with the injuries that they've had to battle. Over to Bruce, and that'll do it. One, two, three, even with the error for Cueto. Cueto do up third when we return.
taking the family to the ballpark, see your Reds take on the Brewers for only $12. Plus the first 8,000 kids, 14 and younger, receive a Red survival bracelet. Thanks to Meyer. Catch all the action Sunday, July 5th for only $12. For tickets, call 513-381-REDS. Visit select Kroger location or reds.com slash tickets. Bumgarner facing Chris Heisey who gets the start in left. Heisey hitting seventh, Cozart eighth, and Cueto ninth as we go to the third inning. Couple of homers, eight knocked in for Chris. That's a strike, says Jeff Kellogg on the inside corner, one and one. Come to the Bay Area, Chris, and every time we come here, there, and it depends on whether it's a two game series, three game series, or four game series. Here's the one one. On a four game series, I know you're going to play golf at least twice. Give us the report. <laughs> This is a pretty good place for golf out here, George. I won't get into it a whole lot more than that, but uh, even though they have had not a lot of rain for a while out here, golf courses are in top notch shape. You played Pebble Beach out here over the I've years? I've never played Pebble Beach. Didn't you play no. Pebble? No, I just have a resistance to dropping down four <laughs> or five bills to play around the golf. Half Moon Bay. You know what I mean? You've played Half oh, yeah. Moon Bay. Where'd you play today? Played at Harding Park will be the site of the 2020 PGA. I will not be in it. <laughs> right center field, long run Blanco. He's there. Got it. And don't forget, it's time for you to tweet your photo using hashtag OhioFanPhoto for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming game broadcast by the Reds. Brought to you by AT&T. They could get a photo of you plunking one into the water. Well, there have been plenty of opportunities. <laughs> what a sight, huh? <laughs> Man. Of course, a year ago, the America's Cup took place here in the San Francisco Bay Area. And the uh, word is that they may bid on it again next time around. There's Cozart in a 229, a couple of homers, 18 knocked in. That's a foul ball down the left field line. Hey, you know, last time Bumgarner pitched against the Reds, he had a very good ball game. Really shut him down. And what he did was he threw a lot of cutters. He threw 53 cutters in that ball game. And a lot of times when a pitcher will face a team for the second time in the same season or the third time in the same season, he's going to change it up a little bit. It looks like already Bumgarner is changing it up a little bit. He's thrown more curveballs tonight percentage wise and he'll probably throw more fastballs thinking that the Reds are going to sit back looking for that cutter. Did not walk a batter in that ball game. He's been on a roll as we mentioned earlier. He's only walked eight batters in his last six games and you know for a, a left hander who's 24 years old that is a rarity. No balls two strikes to Kozar. He got him. Strike out number three for Mumgardner, two away, and here comes Cueto. Of course, it was two years ago this week on the 28th of June of 2012 that he threw his first complete game and struck out a career high 12. That was against the Reds. On that day, it was almost exclusively fastballs. Yeah. He's evolved as a pitcher. He really has evolved. And one thing he's done, I mean, you're going to notice that both of these pitchers, Johnny Cueto and Bumgarner, give a little bit of a, a excess torso turn. Now what they've tried to do with Johnny Cueto is keep his torso turn to a minimum, although that really hasn't worked. He's got as big a torso turn now as he ever has. Bumgarner, on the other hand, they've tried to do the same thing with him, minimize it, and he really has minimized it. It's allowed his arm to catch up with his body a little bit better. He's stronger. His fastball has gotten increased a little bit in velocity. He did that about six or seven starts ago, and the good results have been really worth noting. Quite a win at 135 on the season. No homers, two knocked in. <laughs> Ole. Two. 
loop to right. Here comes Pence. He'll get there, and the Reds go quietly. So two hits for the Reds in the first. Nothing to show for it. Two, three. Crawford leads it off. Call the Reds Group Sales at 513 765 7600 for the Fan Express. I'm Jim Day, so I'm walking into the ballpark yesterday, and outside along the sidewalk, there's a bunch of plaques uh, commemorating all the Giants' former greats, and one plaque stood out to me. Indeed, it's our own Jeff Brantley. Before he became the Reds' closer, he was indeed a pitcher here in San Francisco. And I asked him about it today. Cowboy's a pretty humble guy, but a big smile came to his face. He is very proud of that plaque outside. And why not, guys? Uh, you're not kidding, JD. He, um, you know, he treasures that. And uh, there he is over in the broadcast booth for WLW Radio with Marty Brenneman. And great to have him back after his neck surgery, right, Chris? I'll tell you, he's feeling so much better yeah. now, moving around better, his demeanor is better. And yeah, you know, people don't realize, or if you had, or if you weren't around then, I mean, he was one of the best relievers in the league for quite a while. Came here along with his teammate from Mississippi State. And not a bit scared about coming right after hitters either. Will Clark and Bobby Thickpen was on that team too. We were talking about the College World Series last night. What a team that was. He was a start. He, you know, his career is very much like you. He did whatever it took to win, whatever it took to help his team. He was a closer. He was a starter. He was a relief ace. His career was a way lot better than mine. But I'll tell you what, he he was a guy that never gave up. And he would go out there and pitch with his injured arm injured when he didn't feel right. And he taught me really by watching him that pitchers of a of a certain style can pitch upstairs in the strike zone sometimes more effectively than that and that's the way it was for Jeff Brantley. He threw that ball you know not overpoweringly but he threw that at just the right spot at the top of the zone got a lot of swings and misses got a lot of easy pop ups. He almost pitched up a hill mm -hmm. you know at times with his fastball. I mean Tom Browning could beat you with a, a fastball up and out over the plate. But Brantley did it with power. Crawford flies out. Here's Brandon Hicks, the second baseman, in 178 homers, 22 knocked in. I remember when Cowboy got into the Walk of Fame here in San Francisco, and I mean, it really touched him. You could tell. Great honor. One ball, two strikes. Cueto has dealt with one base runner thus far. Sandoval reached on an error in the second, but he was erased on a double play. Ooh, didn't miss by much. 2-2. Two -two. 
Best earned run average in all of Major League Baseball belongs to that guy right there. You know, he may have disagreed with that call by the home plate umpire, but he never showed any emotion right there. Came Came right back, back with spot. a changeup. I mean, the first pitch was 89. It was a cutter that was meant to go from a ball to being a strike. The last pitch, a changeup, looks like it's going to be a strike and then turns out to be a ball. And he has gotten so many effective outs, mostly strikeouts with that pitch right there just by taking something off of it and coming inside after establishing something hard inside. Well, like Mike Leak last night, this guy at the plate, Madison Bumgarner, the pitcher, no slouch at the plate. He'll swing a pretty good bat. That's a pretty good swing there. But Bruce will keep it in the park. And it's another one, two, three. So nine straight down. A Cuban pitcher Raycel Iglesias. Check out Brandon Phillips' post-game interview last night with Jim Day. You don't want to miss it, where he talked about defying his mom. And Xavier Samaje Kristen is headed to Oklahoma City after last night's NBA draft. Get complete coverage of all of today's action involving Ohio sports on FoxSportsOhio.com. Brought to you by 1-800-SAFE-AUTO. Drive safe, spend less. Back to the top of the order. Reds fans here hoping for two straight against the Giants. Billy Hamilton will lead it off. He singled past the drawn in Sandoval into left first time up, but then was caught stealing on a toss by Bumgarner back to the first baseman Duval. And by the way, we you don't really know. We talked about it last night, and we wondered did Billy bunt on his own? With runners at first and second last night, and he did. Um, and Brian Price, nor anyone else, had any problems with it because he is such a weapon as a bunter. But it, he was credited with a sacrifice, but it was his decision there to do bunt. Don't really know until the game is over and you go into the clubhouse and talk to the manager, talk to the coaches to see how things unfolded. Crawford. They get him by a step. Just a reminder as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to our Miller Time moment coming up later in the broadcast. One of your favorite moments of every night. Always. And morning. Either that or an ice cream, right? <laughs> I'm waiting for them to have garlic flavored ice cream here. Oh, good luck on They'll that. Do it. You They'll know, do George, it. don't look for me for any <laughs> capital on that idea. <laughs> Here's Frazier. 
He reached on a dribbler down the third baseline, but was picked off first. Bumgardner erasing two base runners with the move to first in the first inning. Still 24. Bumgarner won't turn 25 until August. This hit pretty good to left, but it'll stay in the park. Morse in favor in front of the warning track will haul it in, and there's two away. Go back to the first, Chris. Two moves erase the red space runners. Well, he varied his moves quite a bit. Bumgarner has, and you wonder if this is going to affect the way the Reds are going to try their running game with him on the mound. I mean, just sometimes simply throwing over there for a left handed pitcher against an ultra aggressive running team, you're going to run into outs. Now, both of those guys were running on the pitch, so it wasn't like he's got such a deceptive move that you have to be worried about that. The only time he gets you is when you're running. Two away, and here's Phillips struck out first time up. Well, that's one part of it. The other part of it is if you're Brian Price, you're thinking, well, you know, it's hard to get a rally going against this guy. He's a good pitcher. It's hard to get three hits in an inning. So you have to be aggressive in some way to get your offense going. You're kind of stuck. He had two productive throws over to first, but no one threw over to first more than you. You're right. <laughs> I had a lot of more opportunities. <laughs> the one ball delivered. Missing on the outside corner. Well, you just watch Bumgarner pitch, and, and he, he's, he's 24 years old. He's not turning 25 until, you know, sometime this August. So for a guy that has pitched in the World Series already twice, the youngest left hander ever to throw eight innings of shutout baseball in a World Series in history. I mean two years after he led his high school team in Hickory North Carolina to the state championship he's pitching in the major leagues at 19 years old. And now he's learning how to pitch with less than 100 percent effort. A uh, shot past Sandoval that's a base hit from Phillips. Third hit for the Reds a two out base hit and here comes Bruce. Boy he's having a consistent year Phillips is. He likes that spot. Mm -hmm. Tough on lefties is Bumgarner. You can see why with that sweeping motion he works from the first base side of the rubber. It's like he's coming from right field at you. Uh, everything kind of cuts away from you. You really have to give yourself an opportunity to hit the ball the other way. I mean he's going to pitch Bruce away for the most part here unless he makes a mistake probably or comes in off the plate. But Bruce's best chance, and Jay knows this, is, is taking that ball to left field. Unless he gets a hanging breaking ball. And of course, we mentioned how red hot some of these Reds have been. Tonight's steel power tool performer is Jay. Seven straight games with an extra base hit. That's the longest streak since Joey Votto back in 2009. Last with eight, Dave Parker back in the 80s. Not every at bat, but most at bats, the Giants have overshifted against Bruce, and they do it here. Ball two strikes. A right hander's move to first is quick feet and a quick motion. What's the key to a good left handed move to first? Well, vary your moves if you're if you're Madison Bumgarner. If you guy if you're a guy that has a very deceptive move like Tony Sincroni or even a role as Chapman, it's to look like you're going home every time. Or you can look like you're going to first every time. 
But if you watch Bumgarner tonight, sometimes he's gone over with a high leg kick. Sometimes he's gone over with just a step over real quick. Both the pickoffs were quick steps over. Most of the time he goes home, it's quick to the plate. He goes back there twice. He has not thrown a pitch home on that high leg kick yet. And you know, the word has gone out around the league, too, that the Reds were going to be more aggressive this year. And just about every pitching staff well aware of it, so they're more concerned with the running game against the Reds than they have been in years. One and two. That's a bouncer past second. But with the overshift, Crawford is right behind the second base bag and he handles it. Now the Reds get a base hit. Strand the runner. Still scoreless as we go to the bottom of four. I'll be brought to you by JTM Food Group. Let's create great dishes together. Buy Toyota. For over 30 Toyota offers, visit buyatoyota.com. And buy B-Dubs. Kick off your afternoon at B-Dubs with the best seats outside of Brazil this summer. Buffalo Wild Wings. Wings, beer, and sports. Not quite the America's Cup, but boy, those are two sleek boats. And a picture perfect day for it here in the Bay Area. I think every day is a good day for sailing here, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Here's Johnny Cueto through the first three. Sandoval reached on an error, but he was erased on a double play ground ball. No nine batters is all he's faced through three. Blanco up for the second time. He bounced back to Cueto. In fact, he had a one hopper right off Cueto's knee that went right to the first baseman, Pena. Hopped up left side. Cozart there got it. One away. Great to have you with us, George Grand, Chris Welsh, Jim Day, JD will be reporting in in just a couple of minutes once again. And down in the truck, Josh Hall. Our director Brian Hunterman with us on this West Coast trip. Matt Sigafoos, Lauren White as usual in our traveling party, and of course back home sitting in the studio on these late night West Coast games. They probably they wish they had some garlic fries right now. Jeff Coral, Brian Giesenslaw, Kent Dream Weaver riding herd back there with Ron Melanor. And great job as always from Rob Overberg who works on our editing and our weekly show and Matt Coiner does so much of our videography work and thanks to everybody who we always enjoy seeing here down to Frazier he flags it down the long throw got him good play by Frazier great stretch by Pena down at first Tell you what, you get a ball up out over the plate, Hunter Pence is going to hit it hard somewhere. And this ball was definitely up. Look at him just drive right into that ball. And 
Frazier, this ball is just smoked down there, and he just knocks it down and stays with it. Good play by the Reds' defense again. Two away, and here's Posey who bounced to third first time up. Didn't give up long, strong throw and a nice stretch from Pena. Well, the more you see Todd Frazier play third base, the more you're impressed that this guy's defense have come so far. Frazier, of course, is an outstanding shortstop at Rutgers. The youngster that the Giants just called up, Joe Panic, was a great player at St. John's, and I talked to one scout who covered both of them, and he said, you know, they're both very similar. They're just ball players. And you knew that Frazier would find a way to contribute, whether it's a third or second or short. And once he became a third baseman, he latched onto it. Spent a lot of time with Scott Rowland. And Chris, your you know, your interviews with him and the way, especially during spring training when you spend time with him, you know he studies the position. Well, I've done about seven hundred of those CBTS tech talks. And I can tell you that Scott Rowland broke down fielding a ground ball and doing the whole fundamentals as well or better than anybody. And I like to just roll those over and over and over again because he kept it simple and that's the way he played. With a good foundation, good solid fundamentals. You, know, you talk about uh, Frazier starting as a shortstop. Frazier, Cozart, Heisey, Billy Hamilton. Brandon Phillips, all those guys were shortstops. Best players on their teams usually. Huh? Phillips takes care of it. One, two, three for Cueto again. Johnny takes a rest. Mezzarocco will lead it off. You know, pay attention always back to you. You know, so th that that was exactly what happened. You know, I I, I beat him. You know, and that was that was straight. You know, a straight beat. Like I beat him. You know, he, he just he he accepted today. You know, but yesterday was a little tougher for them to you know for him to accept it. But today, you know, he uh, I guess he wake up and say, you know, I have to I have to give it to Pena. After an official inquiry with the baseball gods, it has been deemed that Brian Pena did win that race there was no infraction on the part of either gentleman but Alfredo Simon did want me to point out if you look at that video he is in socks Pena has some spikes on and Simon wants a rematch in spikes so stay tuned that might happen on down the line even Brian Price got involved in this he said usually I side with the pitcher but Pena won the race so I, there you go you interviewed Brian but Simon, he won't be as definitive. Here's Mezzarocco, a big swing towards the corner, curving. That's a fair ball. Off the pole down the left field line. And Mezzarocco will chug in the second with a two base hit. So a leadoff double for the Reds here in the fifth inning from Devin Mezzarocco. Uh, here's another look. Uh, he just attacks the baseball and he loves the ball on the inner third 
up especially I'm not really sure why Buster Posey's got that target right there because that's where Bumgarner puts it and that's where Mezzarocco likes it. JD one last question. This rematch may be even bigger than the World Cup huh. It'll be huge and I'm sure the entire team will be involved in this and Brian Pena I've never seen him more proud of anything <laughs> than winning a race running to quiet the rest of the club. Pena back to Bumgarner that won't get the run of the third. You can see Pena is trying to steer the ball to the right side. It ended up going right back to Bumgarner. So Mezzarocco can't go to third and there's one away. Point in a ball game that you can just feel the energy of this ball game dominated by pitching. When you get a leadoff double, you cannot let this go by without at least getting that runner over a third, giving yourself a chance to drive him in. That's up high to Heisey. Fly ball to center, first time up. Now, with no outs runner at second. You want definitely to get the, the ground ball to the right side for Heisey with one out. It's more find a good pitch to drive if you get it to the right side fine but much more critical to get the runner in from you. Uh, getting the right side doesn't mean anything now. Nope. I mean there's more ways to score from third than from second no doubt but you got to get a base hit here. You get that runner to third with nobody out. Now you're just looking for a fly ball. The Reds had the worst or next to worst average with runners in scoring positions for April in the first part of May. They've been over 300 for June. That's been one of the differences in this club of late. 2 0. Mm. There's that cutter. He one for nine in his career against Bumgarner. Ozark on deck in the eighth spot. That's blooped into left. That'll get a runner to third, but that's all. Mezzarocco had to hold. Not sure whether Morse was going to try to charge it. He didn't let it drop in front, so it's first and third with one out. Reds had two hits in the first, another in the fourth, and two hits here in the fifth. Billy Hatcher, the first base coach, peering over at Steve Smith, the third base coach, as he flashes through his signs. Mezzarocco camped at third, and here comes Cozart. You think a suicide squeeze is out of the question I was thinking here? the exact same thing. On a night like this, it would not surprise you. Giants, remarkably, are, well, they're going to bring in the third baseman even with the bag. They're looking for a double play ball on the ground. That'll get him out of the inning. In the old days, you could fake the third, go to first. That no longer allowed. Mumgardner will try to keep the runner as close as he can at first. Oh, you can only do it if you're right-handed. Yeah. And you can still wheel, but not many people would. The Reds for the first time this year successful on a squeeze in Chicago this past week with Skip Schumacher. Well, the Reds have sacrificed more than any other team in baseball. That goes down as a sacrifice. The one that brings across a big run. That's a strike one on one. The things to consider here is that where you are in the lineup, you're in the eighth spot. You've got a guy on the mound that gets 52% ground balls. He has rolled up six ground ball double plays on the year. Bumgarner has. You're just hoping that Zach Kozar can just get a medium deep fly ball into the outfield somewhere and drive this thing in. He does. Base hit center field. That'll get Mezzarocco in, and the Reds take a 1 0 lead. Well, Cozart picks up run batted in number 19 on the season. His double last night gave the Reds a 1 0 lead in the fifth. And here again in the fifth, he gives the Reds a 1 0 lead. Well, the Reds now had the last six batters, four of the last six batters that Bumgarner has faced, have had a base hit. 
And that's a nice one right there. I'm not sure what that means. That's a new little celebration with the hands that the, the ball club is doing right now. Maybe we'll go to Jim Day at some point to get some clarification. But hey, two hits in a row, three out of the four in this inning. Bottom of the lineup getting it done. I expect Cueto was five sacrifices to sacrifice here and charging from first is Duval. J.D. give us an update. Skip Schumacher brought that in. It's something that he's done for a while with other teams. Now he won't tell me the origin of it or the name of it, but it's basically signifying a big hit. Play a third and he's safe. Great job by Heisey to get a good break off third. And a nice job at the other end from the second baseman to keep that ball from going down the right field line. Another look. Watch Cueto on this. I'm wondering if he just gets in the way of Posey just a little bit and keeps Posey from coming out from behind that home plate area as quick as he normally would and get a throw off. He was getting greedy right there. They wanted to get the lead runner. Heisey's got good speed. Bang, bang. He's safe. And the Reds now, they turn the lineup over, have bases loaded. Well, you don't get too many opportunities against Madison Bumgarner to play a little add on. But what a great chance right here. I mean, and they've done it with a hard hit ball by Mezzarocco, but a blooper to left, a blooper to center, and then the the bunt. So bases loaded one out middle of the infield double play depth. First and third punched in and here's Hamilton. Billy tonight single to left and was. Caught stealing. In the first. And he bounced a short second time up. By the way the other question we had last night did Billy go on his own from third on the pop to second and he did. When he was thrown out at the plate by Panic. That's a strike. 0 and 2. Mm. Trying to go up the ladder, he holds on that, and it's 1 and 2. Izzy off third. Cozart and Cueto off second and first. They need contact here, just not a strikeout. With Hamilton speed, even if he hits a ground ball in the infield, chances are he can beat out two. Loop to right, here comes That'll Pence. Work. He won't get there. It's another run for the Reds. Rounding third coming to the plate. Will be Cozart Hill score, and just like that, the Reds lead it three to nothing. Well, the Reds have had a few breaks, no doubt. Mezzarocco hit a smoke the ball. Heisey blew for one in. Cozart hit it pretty well, and then Bat Billy Hamilton on a good pitch by Madison Bumgarner. Just as able to flip it into right field there. And boy, you put the ball in play, and something good can happen. Red score a couple. Johnny Cueto goes to third. They've scored three in the inning. Gave Bruce pointing at Hamilton down at first. And you know, Chris, you, we always talk about his speed, but you look at what he's done defensively and now offensively. He had that 12 game hitting streak snapped in Chicago, but that's a tough pitch to get to with two strikes. He finds a way to get the bat on. Oh, you're right. I mean, Bumgarner's trying to go for a strikeout. Previous pitch was a high fastball. Hoped that he would, by going up the ladder, Hamilton would swing and miss. So what do you do after a high fastball? You come down and in with a slider. Dave Brigetti out there just probably to try to tell him to keep his head up, keep making good pitches. Good things will eventually happen. So first and third. And here's Frazier down the right field line. Foul. It'll be in the seats. Talk about the difference with runners in scoring position. Prior to June the first. Low 200s, and that's where they are right now. A big 
cash him in in this inning from Heisey, Cozart, Cueto, and Hamilton. Center field line drive. That's going to drop for a hit. Cueto gets a late break and he finally will come home. He went back to third to tag and he'll score easily. And the Reds add on another. They lead it four nothing. The old adage keep the line moving doesn't take big hits just right hits at the right time. Well seven batters to the plate this inning five hits. Reds have put a four spot on Madison Bumgarner and this is a stunned crowd here at AT&T Park. Four runs eight hits for the Reds now. And they lead it four nothing. Petit has started to loosen in the bullpen for the Giants. Here's Brandon struck out first time up single to left the second time up down to third but foul. By the way we want to send a couple of longtime Reds our birthday wishes on this day Fox Sports Ohio and the Reds say happy birthday of 92 years. To Marge Mayberry of Fairfield Ohio and Bill Coslett of Anderson Ohio. 92 big ones. Congratulations and happy birthday. Indeed indeed. Great to have you with us on Reds baseball tonight. Is the 0 1. Down to third. Sandoval has it. They'll go to second, get one, and that's all. And Phillips will be on at first. So it's first and third with two away. By the way, we want to say hi to another great Reds fan. Ethan Childs, a big Reds fan back home. From Mike and Rick Ratus. They have long been two of our favorites when we come to San Francisco, have worked on the crew. Mike's still working with us. Rick is. Deserted us to work with the home crew, but still great to have the two of them around always, Chris. You know, the biggest play in this inning so far was Posey deciding to try to get the lead runner Heisey at third base and mm -hmm. them not getting an out out of it. When your team gives you an opportunity to get a an, an out, you got to take that. And the Giants didn't. They ended up really opening the floodgates right here. The I only hard hit ball of the inning was Mezzarocco's double. And I think a lot of credit has to go with Chris Heisey, who really was busting it from second to third base because Posey thought he had a chance at him. He's a good heady player. If he didn't think he was going to definitely get him, he wouldn't have thrown to third. No one to Bruce. That's corked in the right. Pence has it, but that'll score another run. So Jay Bruce delivers. Bruce, after the big night last night, delivers for his first hit. And his 40th run batted into the season. That's Six hits in the inning. I'm not so sure that Madison Bumgarner has given, done this all year long. I mean, and that last one was rope. We have seen some balls that have been really hit hard here. Shift or no shift, a bullet to right. So 5 nothing Cincinnati. Six hits in the inning, nine hits on the night for the Reds. And the ninth batter of the inning, Bruce delivers a big hit, and Mazzarocco comes up for the second time. He started it all with a double to left to lead off the inning. And the dirt good block by Posey. Run innings, Chris. You ask. There's your answer. Boy, those are crushing innings, especially when you do it against the ace of the staff, and that's right now where Madison Bumgarner is at nine and four. So his pitch count up. Two. His pitch count up now pushing 80 pitches, and most of them have been done in this 
the fifth inning. I mean, he faced the minimum of, of nine batters in the first three innings. Red's got one hit last inning, and they have just tattooed him here in this inning. One and two to Mezzarocco. High in the air to right. Pence looking up in the fog and the lights has difficulty locating. He does, and then we'll haul it in. But ten come to the plate in the Reds' fifth. They score five and lead it five nothing. On the Brewers July 4th through the 6th at Great American Ballpark for only $12. That's right, $12. Saturday, July 5th, first 20,000 fans receive a Joey Votto t shirt thanks to John Morrell. Purchase your tickets today. Call 513 381 Reds. Visit select Kroger location or Reds.com slash tickets. Hope you join us next weekend. The Reds against the Brew Crew. Here's Johnny Cueto as good as he's been all year. He's been even better than that so far on this night. 12 up, 12 down. Sandoval reached on an error, but he was erased. There's a bloop behind Frazier. Can't get it. That'll go as a base hit, rounding first, but holding there will be Sandoval. So the first hit of the night is a bloop off the glove of Frazier. Now the Giants are probably thinking, well, the Reds have had some blue pits. Why not us get into the act a little bit? And Sandoval batting left handed gets one, looks like, on the end of the bat. Now he was jammed on that, and he just fights it off and over the head of Frazier. This is one of those innings that is oftentimes referred to as a momentum inning. You go and your ball club goes out and scores big. Put five runs on the board, and now you got to come back and try to make sure that momentum stays with your ball club. So nobody out one on, and here comes Morse, bounced into a 4 3 double play back in the second. Brewers have already won. They beat Colorado at home tonight, the final 3 2. Reds start the night seven and a half games back to Milwaukee Dodgers and Cardinals are tied 1 1 they're in the fifth in L.A. Dodgers have climbed back to within two games of the Giants in the West. Pirates also beat the Mets three to two. Down to short. Cozart will get one and that's all they'll get. Sandoval, good hard slide into second. Phillips just does elude him, but on the slow bouncing ball, no chance to get Morse. Ed, 
Johnny got what he wanted, but it wasn't hit hard enough. And Brandon knew that Sandoval was coming, and he wasn't going to hang around to get steamrolled. That's a big rig. So one away, runner at first is Morse, and here's Duval who flied to right first time up. Fastball misses inside. Atlanta over Philadelphia four to two. And the Cubs defeated the Washington Nationals seven to two. Uh, the game that they're watching here from AT&T Park is that one played just a little bit south of here in Los Angeles. The Dodgers are hosting the Cardinals right now. It's 1-1. It's a pitching matchup tonight of Carlos Martinez. He was forced out of the bullpen into the starting rotation. Hard throwing right hander against Injun Ryu. Left hander. Rip but fouled. Into the seats down the third base line. Now they're pitching him inside, and they're going to figure out early on whether Adam Duvall can can hit the fastball, not just the one out over the plate, whether he can get the bat around on the inside pitch. When they show, when he shows that he can do that, then they'll start breaking pitches and maybe come back in right here with a changeup. Cueto's not an easy guy to guess along with. Opponent batting average of 173. And the best earn run average in all of Major League Baseball. One and two. Setting up down and away Mezzarocco. That's one of those rare four seam fastballs that he throws. And you know when he first came up to, from the major minor leagues into the majors like a lot of young men with good arms you know you rely on that pitch over and over again but he is now more reliant on everything else besides that pitch he saves that in the tank for when he needs it two two hop back and out of play we talked about Tim Lincecum coming as no hitter this week for the Giants guy who used to throw 94 95 and threw only 36 of 113 pitches that were fastballs Johnny Cueto has evolved as a pitcher now yep. well here's the perfect spot he's got him set up for an inside changeup and that has been an oftentimes a go to pitch for Cueto there it is perfect spot 85 they'll go to second and get one Cueto at first turned and looked and had a bit of a stutter step but they get Morse easily and there's your second out of the inning they got the lead runner. Well again Cueto gets the ground ball but not hard enough that's a change up that he gets so far out in front of he hits it on the cue stick end of the bat. And I think that Cueto is probably surprised to see Morse only about halfway to second base on that. He was going to first when he came off the mound and. Maybe more so to be in that race with, <laughs> with Pena and Simone. So two away running down at first. And here's Crawford. Oh the shortstop fouls it off for strike one. of Joey Votto when he's at the plate and how he's seemingly always thinking a step ahead of the pitcher and that's what Johnny Cueto has evolved in as a pitcher. I mean there was a time when he just threw now he's got a purpose to every pitch. 
nasty at 94 out and two balls two strikes. Off bouncer down to short. They'll go to first, get the final out of the inning. So a leadoff base hit. But Cueto battles out of trouble, and the Reds still lead it 5 0. Taking on the Twins on Fox Sports 1. Then it's Baseball Night in America on Fox as the Cards battle the Dodgers. And the Reds wrap up the night at 10 against the Giants here on Fox Sports Ohio with the Reds live starting at 9 30. So I hope you join us as the Reds continue their West Coast swing. Come Gardner back on the mound. Tomorrow we're on the air with the Reds live at 9 30. Alfredo Simon against Matt Keane. And on Sunday, it's Homer Bailey against Tim Hudson. The Reds then head to San Diego for a three game set. Night games on Monday, Tuesday, day game on Wednesday, off day Thursday, and then the Brew Crew comes to town for the 4th of July holiday weekend. There's Pena to lead it off in the sixth inning. The Reds sent 10 to the plate in the fifth. Scored five and lead it five to nothing. What? Talking about the Dodgers pitching, Chris, how about Josh Beckett? Boy, what a turnaround for him this year. The no hitter and Another great performance this week. Well, he's always had a good curveball, but this time it's about location. I mean, it just goes to show you, you don't have to be an overpowering pitcher to, to get hitters out. Look how Cueto's pitching. Look how, you know, the top pitchers in this league are doing it. They're not doing it with power. They're doing it with command of their fastball and good breaking stuff. What? Mike Leak last night strikes out 12. Didn't throw a ball, I think, over about 91, 92 miles an hour. Most of the pitches that Johnny Cueto tonight has gotten good results on have been less miles per hour wise than 90. 3 2 to Pena. That's a walk, a leadoff base runner for the Reds, and that may get action again in the bullpen for the He's Giants. He's thinking sprint all the time now. <laughs> Hey, don't forget, get ready for Reds action 30 minutes before the start of every game with Reds Live presented by Ray St. Clair Roofing on your exclusive home for Reds baseball, Fox Sports, Ohio. <laughs> he was run down the line like Pete Rose. That's it. Paying you hustle.
There's Heisey fly to center and single to left. Key at bat in that second inning, in that fifth inning, was the Heisey at bat. Another one by Kozart. And another one by Hamilton. Kept the inning alive. The old Jerry Naren keep the line moving philosophy that worked for the Reds in the fifth. Petit back loosening again now for the Giants. Second time he's been up in the bullpen. This bullpen for the Giants. Petit. Gutierrez, Casilla, Romo, Machi from the right side. Former Red Jeremy Affelt from the left side with Javier Lopez. Two two. Down to third, but foul. Hope you join us tomorrow during the course of tomorrow's game. Alfredo Simon going for the Reds and Matt Kane for the Giants. Red general manager Walt Jockety will join us to talk about the acquisition of the new Cuban pitcher Iglesias down to third. Sandoval will get one on to first. Not in time. Well, the speed of Heisey beats it down to first. So one away and Heisey on. Didn't you just get the feeling the highs he was eventually going to hit the ball fair down there to Sandoval. I mean after all he he had about three or four ground ball fouls just off the line and there's Sandoval hugging the line. Makes a nice play. He moved about six inches closer with each swing. The umpiring from the dugout. But I hope you join us tomorrow. Walt Jockety will join us to talk about the signing of Iglesias, the 24 year old Cuban pitcher today. And we'll also kind of assess where the Reds are after we head towards the All Star break here at the end of June. And on Sunday, hope you join us because one of the Reds' greatest pitchers of all time, Jim Maloney, will stop by. The Fresno, California native will stop by to talk some Reds history and some current Reds. Stories. He's a great supporter of Homer Bailey, who has two no hitters, a la Jim Maloney's style, and a great supporter of Tim Lincecum here in San Francisco, too, who pitched his second no hitter this week. Here's Cozart struck out and singled in a run, the Reds' first run. Last night, his double played at the Reds' first run in the fifth, and tonight, his single played at the Reds' first run in the fifth. Ron Wotus, the bench coach for the Giants, had a great comment about Kozart. Wotus was a very similar kind of player, too, a very smart player. He said, you know, I know people look at his batting average. He said, but we respect the way he plays offensively, and we love the way he plays defensively. Kozart will bounce into a double play. No, he's off the bag. Duval had to go to the inside part of the bag to try to get the tailing throw. And credit Heisey with coming down hard on the second baseman Hicks, Chris. And out will come Bochi to argue. Uh, he's going to come out slowly enough that they're going to be able to review. And he, in fact, he didn't even wait. He's just going to go ahead and now order or the review right now, like he ordering another round. Co Kozar never Kozart really touches touched the bag. The bag. No, he's he's going to be out. I mean, it looked like Duval may have been off the bag, but Kozart never did make contact with the bag. Yeah, but did they ever touch the bag from the time that Kozart went down the line, came back, stands on the bag, and then Bruce Bochy comes back out? I mean, you almost have to keep a camera on that bag for a while. Not in the bag, not in the bag. 
Kozar not in the bag. Does Duval ever come back and put his foot on it? I'm not sure if that angle is definitive enough for them to overturn the call there. One of the more difficult aspects of this whole replay system are the angles. Take a look at this angle. All right, Duval's not on it. He's still not on it. Duval's not on it. I don't know if he is or not. Somebody at home with a better monitor will have to answer that. <laughs> if you're home in your living room with your 56 inch special in your brand new house, would that be it? I could see it if I <laughs> squinted really hard, I could see it. On your the little monitor they gave you, George. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, from a giant standpoint, the challenge system has worked more often than not for Bruce Bochy. Thirteen of eighteen times he's been successful. Now, the Reds, more often than not, they've had difficulty. The call is safe. Either it will be overturned or inconclusive. And it would stand. And I don't know that any of those angles followed the first baseman Duval to see if he ever did reestablish contact with the bag. Your evaluation of the system so far in this 2014 season? It looks like it works fine. Yeah. I, mean, I don't have any complaints with it at all. The only thing you miss is the, you know, the the fiery argument by yeah. a manager. <laughs> you, you're kind of taking a lot of the emotion out of the game, but you're getting the calls right. So that's the trade off. And as, as Joe Torrey has said, in fact, he said it publicly and he's also said it to managers who have called to question some calls. He said, look, it's not perfect, but we hope to get it better week by week, month by month, and even year by year. But there are probably more correct calls today than ever before. Jeff Kellogg, the crew chief, and the home plate umpire tonight with his hands on the headset. All right, we're ready to go. Safe. And I think you hit the nail on the head, Chris. I don't think they ever had an angle that followed the first baseman Duval to see if he ever made recontact. So it's inconclusive the views that they had, so the call stands. So it goes a five to three put out. Bruce Bucci has got me thinking <laughs> can anything else go wrong for Mike Ball Club. Three minutes and 36 seconds worth of review. Now back to the pitcher Bumgarner and that will take care of the inning. So after three and a half minutes. Calling conclusive but the Reds still lead five nothing.
Outdoor luxury suite at Great American Ballpark. This outdoor suite features an all-inclusive food and beverage package, flat panel TVs, and luxury furnishings courtesy of Frontgate. Host your group of 30 to 48 people in one of the most unique hospitality areas at the ballpark. Reserve today by calling the Reds Group Sales Department at 513-765-7600. Want to have a fun time at the ballpark? Front gates of one of the great places to go at Great American Ballpark. Aquato is allowed only one hit. It was a bloop by Sandoval that went off the third baseman Todd Frazier's glove to lead off the fifth inning. We go to the sixth. Brandon Hicks will lead it off. With Bumgarner due up next, Joe Panic, the youngster up from Triple A, is in the on deck circle. Hicks struck out first time up back in the third inning. Struck out swinging against Cueto. He was the first strikeout victim of Johnny tonight in the lone strikeout victim to this stage of the game. Coming into tonight, Cueto with 119 strikeouts. All season long, he's been either one, two, or three in strikeout totals in the National League. Three and one. So Johnny wanted to know. Yep. He was waiting for you to tell him. Making ball misses. That's a free pass for Cueto. That's the first walk he is allowed tonight. So the leadoff hitter is on for the second straight inning as we go to the six. And don't forget, time is running out to vote for your 2014 MLB All Stars. You can help send your favorite Red to the All Star game by voting up to 35 times at Reds.com. Vote exclusively at Reds.com or on your mobile phone. Voting ends Thursday, July 3rd at 11:59. This coming Thursday. Will Todd Frazier make it? He's deserving. Yep. Let's go on down the list. Will Johnny Cueto make it? Deserving. Yep. Alfredo hey. Simon. Deserving. Chapman. Deserving. You can go on and on. I mean, it's been a while since the Reds have had the number of players that they've had this year that are so deserving of all-star consideration. Now, they're not all going to make it because you've got limited roster spots. Guys have to be voted on. Every team has to be represented and so on. Strike one to panic the pinch hitter from Bumgarner. So Bumgarner's night is done. Six innings, nine hits, five runs, three strikeouts, and a walk, 97 pitches. And it all blew up for him in a five-run fifth for the Reds. One, two balls hit hard. Of the six hits, and the Reds piece together an impressive inning. No balls, two strikes to panic. Up high. Tyler Colvin has moved into the on deck circle. Colvin taking over for panic at the plate instead of panic it was Colvin who came up. That's pop foul and out of play. 2 2. Looks a little bit more like San Francisco weather right now. Chris Fogg starting to move in a bit. Yeah, it does. Although here it's about 30 degrees warmer than it is down there at Candlestick Point. Mm -hmm. Miss that place, don't you, George? I went there today. Did you? I went to say goodbye. I don't know whether it'll be around the next time I come through. So, I mean, not a picture perfect place, but still a lot of memories there. Two balls, two strikes. Missing 3 2. Well, there's a lot of people that played there either as a visiting player or at home player. I wish you while you were there, you should have bombed. <laughs> You're right. <laughs> But still, there are memories. You know, oh, yeah. Every park brings with it uh, moments. 
This one hit the right pretty good. Bruce on his horse, reaching up, won't get there. It's over his head all the way to the wall. One run will score. Colvin around second, going to third. He'll have a three base hit. So Tyler Colvin drills one over Bruce's head. And on the board of the Giants, it's a 5 1 score. Well, Tyler Colvin actually had 10 triples a couple of years ago when he played for the Colorado Rockies, and he jolts this ball, and that is triple alley right there. That ball, that part of the ballpark is about as deep as anywhere in baseball when it goes 421 into that right center field corner. Jay Bruce is going after it and after it and after it. And that leadoff walk, as they oftentimes do, comes around to score. So still nobody out. A runner at third. The Reds lead down to 5-1, to one, and here's Blanco in the leadoff spot, 0 for 2. When you get a team like the Giants who aren't really playing all that great right now, you get them down, you got your ace on the mound, you've knocked their ace out of the ball game. Don't let them off the map. Johnny takes a minute to collect his thoughts back off the mound and then steps back on top of the rubber. Blanco hit one off. Guido's knee in the first inning right to the first baseman Pena and then pop to the shortstop second time up. They're going to give up a run unless the ball is hit right back to Cueto or maybe to Frazier at third. Two and one. Hunter Pence on deck for the Giants. Bunt takes a strike two and two. Hey, what his back foot was out of the batter's box. Lucky he didn't make contact. Might have been called a ball if he hadn't bluffed a bunt too. Two two. He got him. Nice bounce back from Cueto for the first out of the inning. Uh, there it is, saving that heater in the tank. You know he's got 90, 95 that is, when he wants it. And all of a sudden you just turn it up the way you want it. That is our flamethrower of the night brought to you by Cholula Hot Sauce. 95 miles an hour for Seamer. And Johnny Cueto gets strikeout number two. First out of the six, and here's Pence. Bounce to short, bounce to third, down to short. They'll get the out at first, but a run will score, and it's 5 2. And here comes Posey with the bases cleared now. Posey tonight. Bounce to third, bounce to second, 0 for 2. Zips a fastball in at 94 for strike one. Broken bat down to short. Cozart has it. And that'll do it. So a leadoff walk came back to haunt Cueto. A triple plates a run, a ground ball, another. It's 5 2 Red still lead.
Montgomery. The Reds action came in the fifth inning. A leadoff double by Mezzarocco. A base hit by Cozart made it one to nothing. A dribbler in front of the mound makes it two nothing. A nice swing by Frazier makes it four to nothing. And then Jay Bruce drills a solid base hit to right to make it five nothing. Meanwhile, a triple by Tyler Colvin played at the first run. Giants come back to score another. And it's a 5 2 game. Johnny Cueto on the smiling side of the scoreboard. Madison Bumgardner has exited five innings, nine hits, five runs, three strikeouts, and a walk. So Bumgarner's night is done. Tyler Colvin stays in the game. He's your center fielder. And on the mound is just Miro Petit who takes over for Madison Bumgarner. Uh, Petit, like a lot of the guys that the Giants have in their bullpen, he's a big, hefty guy. 6'1", over 250 pounds. He's kind of bounced back and forth between starting rotation and bullpen. He's had 21 games. Five of those games have been starts. Here's Billy. He reached on a single, the ground ball past the third baseman Sandoval in the first, then was out trying to steal. Bounced to short, and then single to right to knock in a pair. Gave the Reds a 3 0 lead. A couple of key at bats, and one of them came from Billy Hamilton in that fifth inning. Now, Jeff Kellogg called that high strike on Gregor Blanco, and did the same thing right there to Billy Hamilton. He got the same reaction from each of those hitters. 0 oh 2. Reds fans have become accustomed to the electricity that Hamilton brings to the Reds lineup and it's the same story for the Giants of the guy that they miss right now and that's Angel Pagan Pagan when he's not in the lineup their offense changes dramatically and he's on the DL with a back injury right now uh, you know this is what Bruce Bochy was telling both of us before yesterday a couple of things happen you, you have your main cogs get hurt you have other guys just not really in the flow and then all of a sudden instead of playing a team like they did the Reds. The Reds weren't going very good when the Reds played the Giants in Cincinnati. They didn't get to face Johnny Cueto in that series. So you're always facing three, four, and five when you're going good. When you're not going well, you look up and now you're facing the top of the rotation. Giants struck out 12 times last night against Leak. Tonight, Johnny Cueto has manhandled them to only two hits through the first five innings. Six innings. Loop to second. Hicks has it, and Hamilton is retired for the first out of the seventh inning. You know, Chris, you remember we went through a period of time when Tim Lincecum was at his best where it seemed like every time we played the Giants, we missed Lincecum. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it turned around. So it, it happens, especially with teams out of your division when you only play now. I mean, the Giants only come to Cincinnati once, and the Reds only come to San Francisco once. And how have the Giants won two World Series? It's been same as the Reds hang their hats on strong starting pitching. Well, yeah. they have. You're right. And, and they figured out also that it's not easy to go out there and do that, although their fan base thinks that, hey, if you rent it one year, why, why can't you win it every year? Breaking ball to Frazier. They waited a long, long time between World Series victories until they finally got one there in 2010. Matt Cain, who you'll see later in the series, Lincecum will not pitch in this series. He pitched his no hitter the day before the Reds came to town. This one blooped towards left. Out is Crawford. Will he get there? No. It's a base hit for Frazier. When you're going right, a lot of things happen. That's a two hit night last night and a three hit night tonight. Don't try that at home. <laughs> it's 
So Frazier's on with one out, and here comes Brandon Phillips. Phillips struck out. Had a single in the fourth inning, one for three. Cardinals have gone ahead of the Dodgers in the seventh inning down in L.A. Three to one in that one. And if you joined us late, Milwaukee won three to two over Colorado tonight. So the Reds need to win to keep pace with the Brew Crew in the Central. Center. Pence will get there. He has it. Second out of the inning. America's new sports network is the place to turn before every slam, every goal, every game with America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1. Tune into America's pregame weeknights at 6. Only on Fox Sports 1 and Fox Sports Go. Every night at 6. Here's Jay. Hit one right in front of the warning track in center in the second for an out. Bounced out in the fourth and then a solid single made it five nothing in that five run Reds fifth inning. All of those at bats against Bumgarner. Missing on the outside corner. Now the fog is exited, but it's an early call for some of the seagulls. They're moving in already, Chris. They're looking for any of those garlic fries that Jim Day may have left behind. I doubt he left any. Uh, you're right about that. His hands are empty. I can see him down there. The ice cream is done, the garlic fries are done. He's been chewing on mint leaves for four innings. I doubt that that even is going to do the trick. I've done everything possible. Gum. <laughs> water. That'll hang with you for the rest of this series. <laughs> Brian, Brian Price is going to love me after the game. Well warn the viewing audience that at, in the post game, don't stand too close to your TV. <laughs> One ball two strikes to Bruce with two away. There goes Frazier. Here comes the throw. It's in the dirt. He'll hold up at second and a stolen base number 11 on the season for Todd Frazier. You know, the more I see Todd Frazier and that very unconventional way that he takes a lead off of first base, the more I'm beginning to believe that there's something to that. It's a small lead, but he's leaning big time towards second. He's got such a small lead that the pitcher, you know, doesn't really want to throw over and unless he gets instruction from the bench to throw over he's probably not going to throw over. So now the Reds have a chance to get one of those runs back with a base hit here by Bruce. 2 2. Runner in scoring position Frazier. That'll do Looping it. towards right that will oh. be caught. No it doesn't it gets grass and the run will score. Pence is arguing but Dan Bellino out from first base said no it hit the grass and now the decision will be 
Now remember. Remember this. Yeah. You can't. Bruce Bochy has already thrown his use red his flag. challenge. It's up to Kellogg if oh, you but decide. It's, it, but it's at, but it's after the sixth inning. So now that you're the last three innings of the game, the umpires can go ahead and, and make this review if they deem it necessary. Take another look. He can ask him to look for it. They're going to look for it, and they're going to find it. That ball was hit the ground. I mean, Pence may think he did catch it, but you can see here it hits grass. Great effort by Pence to try to get to it. He, you know, I think from all his standpoint, I think he thinks he may have caught it, but it looks like it hits grass and then goes into the webby. It would make it six to two Reds. He's looking up to see if he gets the replay on the board. Now we talk about Todd Frazier being a ball player. That's the same tag you can put on Pence, huh? Guy plays 100% yep. all the time. I mean, he has been the emotional leader for this ball club, an important part of this club ever since he came over here from the Philadelphia Phillies. So back in New York, this umpire review. Yep, it's a base hit, and the run will score. Frazier scampers home, and it's now 6 2 Cincinnati. They got it right, as we were talking about earlier, Chris. The important thing is to get it right, and they did. Well, the interesting thing, I mean, not interesting, but the impressive thing for the umpire and crew is that they've gotten it right both times in real time, and then upon review, they were right each time. So, minute five seconds on this one, and the Reds lead at 6 2. Kudos to the guys in black and blue tonight. There goes Bruce, and he's going to be safe at second. Stolen base for Jay. His ninth of the season. Man, you gotta love the wet Reds are just taking it to him. Steal all the way, never look back on anything. And he just beat the throw. Nice to know that Hamilton's not the only stolen base threat on this club. And there's a guy that had knee surgery about a month ago. You know, we were on, on the air and in talking with uh, the coaching staff after the game and before the game today, they felt the same way we felt last night watching Jay round second going to third. It was the first time they saw yeah, him run about, freely. How about him sliding like that? Yep. That's a great sign that the leg is feeling good. That's a shot right at Crawford, though. But Jay Bruce delivers another run scoring base hit. And the Reds lead at 6 2 as we head to the bottom of seven.
San Francisco. I'm Jim Day, and if you want to get to the promised land, you had better be a good road team. Let's check out our IGS bringing the energy, and you'll see that the Reds have certainly turned up the wick on the road. Best road record since May 30th in Major League Baseball. Los Rojos, 10 and 3, 769 winning percentage, better than the Royals, Mariners, and Brewers. And you guys have talked about it all night long about how they're playing better on the West Coast and to a man in that clubhouse. They are confident playing in this ballpark. And as you know, mentally, half of the game. Good to see. Thanks, JD. And you're in that clubhouse day in and day out, before games and after games. Man. I, I come and go, but I, I notice a distinct difference from the last time I was here. And you, you get the feeling that, that they believe in each other right now. There's no doubt about it. And I talked to Devin Mezzarocco about the uh, the added camaraderie between the, the teammates. He says, you know, it just it takes us a while to kind of get used to each other, even though the nucleus of this team has been together. And you know, winning definitely breeds having fun in the clubhouse. But they are definitely are definitely a much closer unit now than they were at the beginning of the season. And at times, the clubhouse was uh, hate to use this comparison, but it was like a morgue in there. Now it is not. The music is blaring after games, and uh, it's good to see. One ball, two strikes to Sandoval. You know, Chris, the other part of that equation. It's a new manager, a new coaching staff, not all, but a partially new coaching staff with a new pitching coach, a new hitting coach, new third base coach. So you really, it takes time for all of that to come I together. Think that, I think you hit it right on the head there, George. And these guys have been together. There have been a couple of personnel changes, but for the most part, the same guys have been there except new manager, new ways about the way he does things, new coaching staff that you're going through, new batting coach, new pitching coach. Popped up, Pena. Will he get there? He will. And all those things, you know, it's a lot to handle. It sounds like I'm overblowing it, but uh, you know, I can see where Devin Mezzarocco would admit that it takes a while. And there, believe me, when you hire a guy like Brian Price, as, as smart a guy he is and as good a communicator he is, there is still some doubt among the everyday players. Here's a guy that was a former pitcher. He didn't pitch in the major leagues. And here he is, my manager. How can he relate to me? I'm an everyday player. He doesn't know what it's like to play every day. A lot of these guys really love Dusty Baker quite a bit. So, you know, it, it, it's, a, it's a thing that you finally start to win, and then you start to galvanize. And sometimes losses can help you galvanize. And I think that they went through some times, too, when they thought, hey, we're the only ones who believe in ourselves here. But let's hang in there until everybody gets healthy. So now that everybody is healthy, I mean, look at this. On a night that you're giving Joey Votto the night off because he needs one against, against the ace of the other team, you're getting the job done with six runs on the board. Morris to center field, Hamilton there, two away here in the bottom of the seventh inning. Of course, it doesn't hurt that you have Johnny Cueto on the mound. Uh, pitching, pitching, pitching. Ludwig the night off next to Votto. And you know the guy on the left side of that screen is part of that too. You know Skip Schumacher, Brian Payne, you both have added a little flavor to that clubhouse. No doubt about it. Guy's a grinder. I mean, he's not afraid, even as a newcomer, to get in somebody's face. He's got a little bit of Scott Rowland in him. Two away. Here's Duval. Fly it out. And bounce into a fielder's choice. Uh, they pitched Duval inside last time, and that first pitch there was a breaking ball away. And just wonder if Johnny Cueto's experimenting out here, saying, "Well, we notice that you can hit the inside pitch. Can you hit the outside one?" Now they're going away again. Boy, I tell you, he can carve you up now. Johnny is good on this night. He leads it six to two as we head to the eighth.
All-Star game, best of the National League, best of the American League. Go at it in Minneapolis. Don't miss the action Tuesday, July 15th. Where? On Fox. And don't forget, as promised before, it's time for our Miller Time moment. You know, Lincecum has pitched a no-hitter, and the great lefty Carl Hubble was one of the all-time greats. All-Star game moment. How about striking up five of the big-time guys, starting with Ruth Gehrig and the likes Chris, that was one of the days that will live in infamy in all-star history. That was Carl Hubble, uh, Hubble and that screwball that he would throw. Here's Payne. He bounces out for the first out of the top of the eighth inning. You now, Giants history, Carl Hubble was a great pitcher in, in the early all-star years, was a perennial all-star. You mentioned Candlestick Park, and one of the lasting memories of Candlestick Park All-Star history is Stu Miller, the little left, the little uh, reliever being blown off the mountain by the wind. Great moments, great memories. What are your? Uh, there aren't many fond memories, but what are your most recognizable memories of Candlestick? Well, I got my first major league win uh, as a Cincinnati Red. In Candlestick, and I remember walking. You know, you, you couldn't get through the clubhouse from yep. the visiting dugout. You had to walk on the field all the way down the right field line where the the door was, and that entranceway would take you to both clubhouses. And so I, after I, I pitched, I don't know, seven innings or so, and I I uh, sat in the dugout and waited, and I walked off the field <laughs> with Pete Rose. And I'm thinking to myself, man, I'm pitching for my hometown team. I'm walking off the field with Pete Rose. I just won a game for the Reds. And that was a pretty cool moment. Great memory. And you probably still, you close your eyes, you can still feel it as you walk towards that right field corner. Huh? I wish I'd done it another hundred times. <laughs> <laughs> That's how good it felt. <laughs> Heisey strikes out two away, and here comes Cozart. Heisey one for four on the night, a big at bat with a base hit in the fifth. So did Cozart have in the fifth. His single to center made it one nothing Cincinnati. Back in those days, when they well, now by the time you got there, they had done it. But in the early going at Candlestick, everybody entered from the right field corner. But there was, there was no bathroom in the, in, in the dugout. Well, the one they had in the dugout, you didn't want to use that. Exactly. Anyway. Door was broken. You look in. And, you know. before, I'm not sure why they put it in there. Before they enclosed it, it was a chain link fence in the outfield where you looked out. To the expanse of nothing. And once they enclosed it for football, it became a whole different club. But the wind still was lethal. If you were a giant fan in that era, you were a real fan. Yeah, I'll tell you what, that's a different breed of fan. Very tough. One ball, two strikes, two outs. And you spent a lot of time in the bullpen. And that was maybe one of the toughest bullpens to operate from with those fans around you. I was told him I was going to come back in the winter when it warmed up. <laughs> the old line, the coldest winter I ever yeah. spent was the summer in San Francisco. It's funny because you come here for 49er football in November. It's picture perfect, October, November. The candlestick, a different story in July and August. One, two, two outs. Well, the Reds are retired one, two, three in the eight to the bottom of eight. We go. Johnny Cueto has been spinning them tonight.
has been brought to you by Chevy. Visit your Tri-State Chevy dealer today. And by Cincinnati Children's Hospital. Mark their third in the country ranking on United States News and World Report's 2014 Best Children's Hospital list. Well, best pitchers in the world start here in San Francisco, go across the bridge and head to AT&T Park and what do you find Johnny Cueto dealing in another night Chris. Well pretty much getting used to expecting this here out of Johnny Cueto this year. I mean after all he comes in here with the lowest earned run average of anybody in baseball the lowest batting average against. 16 starts 14 of those quality starts coming in tonight you're going to add one to that already. In fact, this is already an ultra quality start for Cueto. Seven innings, two runs or less. And here he is in the eighth. Young man from the Dominican Republic who has developed great pride and great work ethic in the way he approaches his job, and he's been at the peak of his game this year. Broken bat to short. Cozart. Well, I can guarantee you one thing, George, when. Johnny Cueto's on the mound, and we are on Fox Sports Ohio. They are dialed in a La Romana, Dominican Republic. I mean, the whole town loves Johnny Cueto. Hovered around the TVs. And it'll be another reason for celebration. It's mighty early in the morning there now. I think they are four hours ahead of San Francisco time. A one hour different from yeah. Cincinnati. So it's not too late yep. for them to stay up and watch Johnny, though. Here's Hicks. Struck out and walk in on the hands, fouled off 0 and 2. It does not appear that any red is going to be voted into the All Star game. They're far enough behind at every position that no position players will be voted in. The question is who might be at it. You know that Cueto, and barring anything unforeseen, is going to be named. And the question is, might he be the starter of the All-Star game? And really too early to talk about that because you don't know what will happen with rainouts and rotation. He may pitch on Sunday. I mean, it's more important for the Reds if he needs to pitch on Sunday that he will, which would rule him out of an All-Star start. One ball, two strikes. Yeah, you know, and the other part of the equation too is, I mean, Mezzarocco, and of course, Miyadi Molina, perennially an all-star. Behind the plate, Luke Croy's had a phenomenal year with Milwaukee. Yeah. So very difficult to take three catchers. Frazier at third. And if you want to win the game, even though he missed part of the year, Brent uh, Aroldis Chapman will always enter the equation you as a reliever. The yeah, you no <laughs> doubt about it. And if you also want to win the game, why wouldn't you pick Billy Hamilton? Sure. Now, he doesn't have all-star numbers. Sure. But if you're talking about putting a team together, you know, you don't have to get Billy on base. Somebody else can get on base. Yep. The Reds found that out in the month of September last year. Hey, don't forget, after tonight's game and every Reds game, Fox Sports Ohio breaks down the game, brings you the first interviews with Brian Price and everyone from the dugout and the clubhouse. Reds Live brought to you by Performance Kings Honda. Now, we should really petition the guys at Fox. Jim Day should be on that club, too. Right, J.D.? We'll take you. I'd like to go to Minneapolis. No question about it. I'm I happen to be available. If they need a dorky looking sideline guy, I'm there. With garlic breath? That too. <laughs> Guido keeps mowing them down, two away here in the eight. Talk about easy gas and great motion, Chris. He's got it working tonight. Well, just deception. And command and that's really the two things that Johnny Cueto does better than just about anybody else out there. Phillips will surround this one. Colvin who triple last time up thrown out. 
and Johnny has gone through eight with a 6 2 lead. Two hits. He's been spectacular on this night. And at the plate, he also contributed, Chris, in that inning where the Reds ended up with six hits and five runs. This John Morrell hot dog play of the night was a key. Yeah, I'm not so sure the Giants would have ended up giving up as many runs in that inning as they did had that not played out the way it did. Posey tried to go to third. Heisey was too quick for him. Johnny Cueto was the one that laid down the bun. He ended up beating out the end of that at first base, too, and came around to score that inning. Five runs in that inning. And that's really been the biggest inning that the Reds have had all night long, obviously. So here's Johnny to lead it off in the top of the ninth. Fly ball to right, that bunt. In the fifth, and a ground out back to the pitcher. He joined us late. Both pitchers on their game for the first four innings of this one. Cueto did not allow a hit until a bloop glanced off the glove of Frazier by Sandoval to lead off the bottom of the fifth. Meanwhile, Madison Bumgarner gave up hits to Hamilton and Frazier in the first, but he got Hamilton trying to steal second after he threw behind him and picked off Frazier to erase those two runners and then retired eight straight before Phillips finally got a base hit with two outs in the fourth. This one popped up to the right side. Hicks is there, got it, and then the roof caved in on him in the Fifth inning, a double by Mezzarocco, and then those five hits that produce five runs, and the Reds led it five nothing. As you continue to tweet your photos using the hashtag #OhioFanPhoto, here's tonight's fan photo of the game, brought to you by AT&T. Nice. A lot of Reds fans here, huh? I mean, walking around town and. Downtown and here at the ballpark, a lot of red shirts, a lot of folks from California, and a whole bunch that have decided to take the sojourn to the West Coast and enjoy San Francisco. And why not? And of course, some of them have come out here in years past and decided not to go home. <laughs> hey, send my stuff. <laughs> as long as you get your golf clubs, you're okay, right, Chris? <laughs> <laughs> Here's Billy. Back to that fifth inning, our Nissan drive of the game. A big at bat for Billy Hamilton with two strikes. He loops this one into a right, two run score, and that gave the Reds a 3 0 lead. Key at bat for Hamilton and for the Reds. This one blooped down the right field line. It will be a fair ball. He'll get two and be content to stop at second as Pence gets the ball in.
You know, talking to Don Long before the game tonight, he made a great comment about the philosophy of hitting. Here's another look. Takes a little off, does Petit. It's a base hit. Javier Lopez going down to the bullpen. We talk a lot about offensive numbers, and what Don Long said, and it's, it's so true. It it takes time for players to hit as a team, not to hit individually for base hits, but to hit as a team. And that fifth inning is a great example of a club that hit as a team. You're exactly right. I mean, put the ball in play. You know, it's taken a while, I think, for the Reds to get used to a new hitting coach. Mm -hmm. I mean, not that his style is completely different than Brooke Jacoby. I mean, a lot of times coaches will say the same things, but in different words. But they'll have different drills. They'll have different ways they handle things, different terminology. It takes a while for guys to get used to that. Very thoughtful guy, Don Long. Good communicator. Friendly. Got a great sense of humor. One ball to Frazier. There goes Hamilton. Here comes the throw down to third. Not in time. A stolen base for Billy. Number 33 on the season for Happy Feet. And he got some dirt kicked up in his eyes with that one. Probably bugs. You have to wash the windshield after you drive fast down the highway. I think same thing happens to Billy. Get those goggles. You know, if you get this run in, though, you're no longer within slam range. Yep. And that's why this one extra run, it may seem like an overkill here in the top of the ninth inning, but get it in. 3 0 to Frazier with the infield in. No action in the Reds bullpen right now. Cueto, who is sitting on a 6 2 lead, has allowed only two hits on this night in San Francisco. That's ball four, it's first and third. So Frazier, already three hits on the night, is on base for the fourth time tonight. Three singles and a walk. And here comes Phillips. Brandon one for four coming up here in the eighth in the ninth. to check it can't do it for a strike. Now if you're Billy Hamilton the running game never stops but Chris after two runners were picked off in the first inning sometimes you put the running game to rest the Reds haven't done that tonight and it's helped in these scoring innings. For a ball one and one. Uh, Petit trying to go out there and trying to get that ground ball double play, hoping Brandon will roll over on it. Sergio Romo has joined Lopez, loosening in the bullpen for the Giants. He's had a quiet week. Did not pitch last night, and of course Lincecum pitched the no-hitter prior to that. There goes Frazier. This one, a oh, line drive, wow. and there's a double play. Huh. Line drive to first ends the inning. Number 47, Johnny will try to close it out. Bottom of nine.
well, who else is it going to be about except Johnny Cueto? He has come in here and just silenced the Giants bat. That's a double play in the first inning that he needed or early in the ball game. That was second inning double play. Not a lot of strikeouts for Cueto so far. Only three on the night, but he has just had them eating right out of his hand. Fastball working, changeup working. Uh, Mazda pitch by pitch now going and gunning for his fourth complete game and that would put him atop the leaderboard in the National League for most complete games. Right now he is tied along with Henderson Alvarez and Adam Wainwright with three. Joaquin Arias will pinch hit in the leadoff spot. Now the pitcher's spot. Take strike one from Cueto. Got in on him, blooped into left. Izzy there, he'll squeeze it for the first out. One away here in the ninth. Johnny has been dominant so many times, Chris, and the first hit off him was the bloop with Frazier pulled in at third. Couldn't get back, glanced off his glove for a single. The only hard hit ball was Colvin's triple. He has been just about untouchable on this night. Well, remember the last time that Johnny Cueto took the mound here in this ballpark playoff game, first game of the playoffs, and that was a game in which he injured himself. Sam LeCure came out of the bullpen and gave the Reds a couple of innings and ended up winning that ball game. And of course, that was a series in which the, car, the Giants ended up winning three in a row back in Cincinnati. Had Cueto been healthy that whole series, a lot of people around Cincinnati, including me, would have thought that that series would have ended differently than seeing the Giants go on and ultimately win the World Series. Kozar can't get to it. It'll be a base hit for Pence. I think that Johnny had something to, to prove here tonight. And I think he always feels that way because you always want to go out, especially when you're on the road, to prove to people in these new ballparks that, you know, I am worthy of a 1.8 earned run average. I am as good as my numbers say I am. Well, now down in the bullpen, our oldest Chapman is guarded up and started to loosen. Here's Posey, Buster tonight. Three ground balls, one to third, one to second, one to short. Reds double play depth, hoping to turn two and end the night. Chapman worked last night, gave up a leadoff double, but then got out of the ninth inning in a Reds victory. Ball and a strike. Sandoval on deck, Posey at the plate. Tonight, Posey three for four in his career against Johnny tonight, 0 for three. Look out up and in, three and one. Looks like they're giving Chapman a little extra time in case he is needed to try to get loose. Johnny tonight allowed Sandoval to reach. On an error by the second baseman Phillips in the second, he was erased on a double play. Didn't give up his first hit till the fifth. The second hit didn't come until Colvin's triple. And that's a breaking ball wide. And now 
There's two on and one out. And here comes Sandoval and Brian Price. When it looked like he would not have to go to his bullpen. Will come out and check the mileage meter on Johnny before he makes a decision. That's it. The Cueto will exit, unable to complete the task. But boy, is he brilliant on this night, Chris. Commanding with only two hits through the first eight, gives up a base hit here in the ninth. And in comes a roll Chapman while the pitching change takes place. We'll take time out for these messages on our Skyline Chili call to the bullpen. Will not complete the deal. He exits in the ninth inning with one out after giving up a base hit and a walk. It's a shake of the hand from Jeff Pico, a shake of the hand from his manager, Brian Price. And second straight night, they'll call upon the Roldis Chapman to try to close it out. You know, Johnny wanted to close it out himself, Chris. Well, he did. He would have had four complete games had he been able to do that. In fact, this is, however, a safe situation. At the time running on deck circle. There's Sandoval who reached on an error, single off the glove of Frazier and popped up to the first baseman facing Aroldis Chapman. Last night he grounded to short for the first out of the ninth inning when Chapman came in. Two on, one out. Reds hoping for two. That's a fastball in there for strike one at 100. And you know Chapman's story 33 straight games with at least one strikeout in his appearance. Waves at that 0 and 2. Don't forget to be with us tomorrow, 9 30 Reds Live. Alfredo Simon against Matt Kane. And on Sunday, 3.30 Reds live for Homer Bailey against Tim Hudson. And the Reds head to San Diego for three. We'll bring all three of those to you on Fox Sports Ohio. Then the Reds come home Friday, Saturday, Sunday against Milwaukee. 0 2. Trying to get him to chase upstairs. Uh uh. Michael Morse on deck. Sandoval 0 for 2 against Chapman in their matchups. Down and in, 2 and 2.
biggest at bat of the night for the Giants last night. Mike Leake struck out Sandoval to preserve his lead. This one wide of third. They'll try to get the out at Got third, him. and they do. Great play by Kozart and a great job by Frazier to get back to the bag. Quick recognition by Frazier that Kozart can get to it, so he started back to the bag, and they get a force out. Well, these two guys have played alongside each other long enough to almost know where they're going to be before they're there. And a basic play, really, on on a situation like that, first and second ball hit to the shortstop's right. The only play he's got is the third base, and he clearly gets him before the runner gets in there. And now Chapman, one out away. So two away in the ninth, and here comes Morse. Morse tonight bounced into a double play, bounced into a fielder's choice, and fly to center. Has faced Chapman only once in regular season play, 0 for 1. Posey walked, he's out at second base. Sandoval on the fielder's choice is down at first. There's that streak we talked about. The two away. Chapman to the stretch. Locked him up. One and two. That's the biggest difference in Chapman this year. It's not all 100 miles an hour. You mix in one or two of these. Well, you're right. That's a slider right there. But what he's not thrown tonight is any of his changeups, which statistically has been his best pitch as far as throwing it and getting results. Oh man. <laughs> Aroldis Chapman keeps the streak alive. That's 34 straight games with at least one strikeout in his appearance. He gives Johnny Cueto what he needed in two hours and 44 minutes worth of baseball. The Reds six runs 12 hits and an error strand six. The Giants two runs only three hits no errors stranding three and Good reason for Johnny to smile on this night, Chris. Well, he had a good night. Johnny did. He was prepared. He took a good game plan out there. And I think from Brian Price's perspective, he was very happy that Devin Mesoraco and Johnny Cueto worked just as good as together as with Brian Pena behind home plate. It gives you a little bit more options when you're not married to only one pitcher and one catcher. Good team victory. The Reds have won the first two in San Francisco. They're just hoping to keep it going.